it's totally. It's hard for people to That's perfect. That because okay. their attention is so grounded at this level yeah. that they feel that this is real. Yeah, it's it's and, all it's all a dream sequence. And all this is, you know, it's just a, a, another little. It's to me like Peyton Place. You remember that show? Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where yeah. It's just a soap opera city. Totally. And that's just what this is. Yeah. Creation is just a big soap opera. People take it too seriously, though, don't you think? Just have fun, <laughs> enjoy it. They do. It's time to enjoy that. was about was exploration and just uh, having a mind shower. It's like uh, standing naked before yourself and really finding out really what, what, what really matters. And uh, that's when I really learned that if I was really wanting to become a self-realized artist, why would I hate myself? Why would I be self-destructive in my behavior? And why would it kill anything, especially myself? Because when I was eating animals, that's the way I was feeling. I was very suicidal. But until I moved to the Bay Area and joined a commune where I learned to love animals, not eat them, and then get involved in cosmic consciousness, I realized this game that I was seeing after taking psychedelic experiences, not let, suggesting anybody to do that, but it gave me the mind shower to see everything as a stage set. Because the only, really, the only reality that exists is nature. And once you embrace nature, you become natural. And once you're natural, what you crave is natural food. And that began my journey, to really get out of the illusion and start loving myself, not hating myself. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know, through the 60s, what got me was the music. Oh, yeah, it was beautiful. You know, it was like when you know, Elvis was kind of that coming in and changing the consciousness because it was so solid. Remember even uh, uh, Ed Sullivan said, you can't wiggle your butt on the Ed Sullivan show. And then, of course, then came the Beatles. Well, in that movement of opening, just like you said, it was opening the consciousness. Because you use music to open up consciousness. Then you were talking about Timothy Leary, yeah. which was back in my time, too, of course. And, of course, I went into the window pane and some people's LSD type thing. But I didn't, you know, at that time I was a fruitarian and someone said, well, you want to try some of this window pane? LSD. And I said, okay. But I was already working in the moment. So all it did was intensify my presence in the moment, which then all these answers started coming in from the universe. And I realized, you know what, I can live in the moment without anything. I don't need drugs, I don't need anything. So yeah. I dropped that right off, and I started then out of body traveling, and then started realizing that, just like you said, this is a dream. This, this, this is a, a stage where you play your, your, uh, your drama. Yeah, and what I was feeling, I was take, I was on this elevator ride, but the idea is I went so fast, I really didn't experience the floors in between. So as a result, once I started to let go of all that, because I really discovered it really was uh, self-destructive behavior, but it was a mind shower that I needed to blast off all the early conditioning, the mentors, our t my parents, and all of the different experiences I was having, and realize that what I was embarking on was coming into a way of relanguaging my thinking and that began the the, uh, the foundation of the structure to allow me to become more enlightened and to really reflect on truly who I am as a spiritual being on this planet wanting to create service to humanity through knowledge and through the love that we have for each other and how was your experience from that? If you just like discuss with each other the experience, like were you weird at coming out with certain things like veganism and eating fruit and stuff like that? You know, how was it for you guys? Well, I was totally outrageous. I we were colors and bells and third eyes and doing anything I could to uh, lying in the middle of the street and having people photograph me and wearing dresses and holding on to my Cub Scout hat and making sure that I wore it right in front of all the, the people and whatever. It's absolutely. I was demonstrating with uh, Ram Dass and Allen Ginsberg in 1968 during the Democratic Convention. I was freaking outrageous. I was wearing carrying flags and all kinds of stuff because basically what it was is not going against the mainstream but just attempting to wake them up and the idea is that being a creative artist I've always been given the instruments to strive towards awakening myself and that was the vehicle that has helped me to become more awake but the thing is I was always demonstrating but we have to do it with love and education and that's what I love so much about being here 
learning this and ga gaining the tools that I can move forward with through knowledge which helps to set me free and then I have the thoughts and the ideas to assist others to set them free. And that's what's beautiful about this, coming home and being home. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. You know, for me, it was the, the foods in the inner journey. It was, you know, hooking to the fruitarian levels. It's because I was reading the basic uh, uh, raw foods and uh, Herbert Shelton and the natural hygienic people. Uh, but then I started reading a few, very few voices out there talking about fruitarianism and the homo sapien being a fruitarian. And that just polarized me. And, and as soon as I started moving that, my journey started over. I knew I was sent here to do this. Because I just started opening up. I had spiritual masters all around me. They started taking me on all these journeys, introducing me to all these spiritual cities and all these lectures and the light. And, and then I'm, I, I'm catapulted into, uh, into consciousness where I'm hanging around a place where not, there is nothing but allness. I mean, it's just it was this amazing journey for me. And I started out again living in a little Volkswagen camper van, eating fruit, trying to find the answer to the universe. Beautiful. And I realized that, you know, the answers are not here in the physical form. This isn't reality. This is the dream, like you said. This, this is the drama. This is where you play out your desires. The stage set. It's, it's yeah, not yeah. you. Yeah. And I'm after who you are. Who is the big I within yourself? Yeah, it not only makes sense, but it actually makes dollars. Because the thing about it is, is that fruit is of a higher vibration. And why wouldn't you want to be in the highest vibration? And when you eat that electronic food, it actually lifts you and you become more sensitive and more receptive to the divine. And it's just, it's just an easy download. And that's why you get involved in this kind of behavior of getting away from the density of the material world. It elevates you to spirituality. It's just, it's just an automatic process. I, I think you hit on that when you're talking about the density of the food even. Because the more dense a food, the more earthly it is, and the more it seems like it pulls you down. Yeah, exactly. The fruit is more heavenly. Yeah. And it's more, of course, with that, it has the highest vibrational frequencies, some of the highest nutritional uh, foods. Why would you not want to go there? They taste the best. Better a little time to prepare it, peel and eat. And you can regenerate the whole body doing it. What's really, what's really interesting is I became a farmer because I wanted to chart my own health destiny. And what's really interesting, I chose fruit rather than vegetables. And intuitively, my spirit was teaching me and telling me, even though I was being ridiculed by others and saying, yeah, it's high glycemic, you know, you're going to have too much sugar, you're going to get candida and everything. But what was happening to me is I was actually soaring. I always had a lot more energy, a lot of more get up and go, more passion and more expression for my life and they were withering they were like falling apart and here they're telling me the proper ways to do it and what it did it actually strengthened me to really have the passion and the conviction to follow through with this and I c continuously to do it ongoingly every breath every every yeah. morsel of energy but you know these journeys are long for each and every one of us because you have your ups and you have your downs you, you get into fruit and then you're pulled away because your mind's already been conditioned for how many years here with this, this gigantic conditioning machine we have here. Your mind is totally grabbed as an infant and then conditioned the way the society wants you to think, wants you to feel. So you can't use your mind to find God. What can you use? Yourself. You know, we, we, our big thing is that our mind is us. Our mind is not us. It's a tool we use. And you only learn that when you pull yourself into that now, that eternal now. And by the way, I love Ram Dass. <laughs> I've used his, I knew Ram Dass, and I've used his philosophy to be here now, be yeah, here yeah, now. Yeah. You know, and you always want to work on that, even telling yourself, live in the moment, be here now, stop thinking. Stop the, talking. The, the thing that I've done is I've always been a deep thinker, and I've spent most of my life with myself, obviously. And as a result, when somebody says something to me, I think what the common thing that most people do is they immediately react. But what I've learned to do is act. And then I, I say a little quietness to myself. I look within and I say, how would that be in nature? And then I 
understand the correlation from the way it is in nature, I integrate it within my own thinking, and then I come up with a clarity of thought which really resolves the moment of what they're saying. So as a result, I never react, but I only act with, with enlightenment, with knowledge, to really set everybody free and give them the clarity of thought of what they're striving to accomplish. Because the thing is, you, like what I've learned in Tai Chi, you can't fight fire with fire. You have to allow the energy to flow right by you. So you just take it in, you don't react to it, you absorb it, and then you give the information or the love back to the others so they don't react towards you and you become harmonious. You're, you're in the flow, you're in the loving connection with that other individual because everything is motivated by love and you just have to understand the kind of love that they need in the moment to set us free. And can you talk a little bit about today's movement you see with the youth now? Like what's what sorry, what's changed? You know, what's changed um, from when back in the sixties to now with today's youth and people you're coming across? Well it's the particular souls that are coming to the planet right now is really the difference. You've got advanced souls because what this planet did is got involved in the mind, which breeds narcissism. And so what you have is academics shoved us here and going into the higher worlds next. So quicker are aspects of that, health much quicker. I mean, we went through hell going through these states of consciousness because you got people beating you up. And back then, we were, I, you were out there where everybody was. I'm alone. I'm living in the woods by myself. I'm living in, in Florida where they couldn't even find books on raw. So I'm living alone. I have no groups to help me. I have nobody to help me except I had the masters to help me. And that's what I did. I went within and dealt, you know, into the inner world of God. I think there's two factions of the youth. I think what you're, what you're referring to, I, I call them the indigo children. Yep, there's and the indigo they're coming children. in with spiritual insight and knowledge and uh, beautiful sensitivity and being highly creative and self-realized. But there's another faction of our society with the youth that are, are striving to find identity. And they, what they're doing, they're trying to deface themselves, they're putting tattoos all over themselves, and they're really defacing what God has given us to be in a really beautiful form. And the only thing that's keeping us from that beauty is our habits and our thoughts. And there's no, re, there's no way to create identity because you already have it. And all you have to do is let yourself be, gain the right knowledge, and get to the essence of what life really matters and the way to feed ourselves and while we're here, and that is for service and to make this experience a much more beautiful place and not to be in conflict, but to be in harmony. So I think it's really important to encourage others to find identity with themselves in relationship to nature or God or spirit or whatever you want to call it. I think it's a much more think, positive approach. I think another consideration is, this is, this is a kind of like a way station. You have all levels of souls come here. You have souls that just come here for the first time. You have souls that are getting on their journeys here and going into the higher worlds next. So you have all levels of this. I think you young guys are in here, like we call them the indigo children or the golden children and things like that. It's just that you guys are coming in as higher aware souls in an area that has got itself so claustrophobic. It needs the light. It needs the love. It needs the light. And that's why you guys are all turning on to that. And so it's just an upliftment of this level. We've been digging in the trenches for years, and now we paved the way, and now it's all you guys is right. And that's why you see our classes the way they are and everything else. I've been in the trenches long enough. I'm tired of the battles, and we are making that room for you guys to battle. <laughs> because you are, in a sense, a classical sense of good and evil, bad, negative and positive. You always have that flux of magnetics. So, but it's heavier on the negative side now. So, wobble is getting out of shape so we are introducing that spiritual energy that higher awareness how you look and perceive things that's awareness how you perceive and so you're seeing a lot more of that that's exciting because now look at how many people are into raw foods when i got into got into the raw foods one they, they guesstimated one percent of the population visited a healthcare practitioner one percent now it's like 80 70 some percent yeah, it's Big, huge go. difference. Yeah, less is best. Yeah. Some yeah. people had to go through drugs. Some people had to go through a lot of different shapes to understand consciousness. But the reality is, you always have to come to yourself again. You have to come to that, who am I? What am I doing here? Where am I from? you got to find those answers. And you're the only doorway to find them. And it's 
understanding that and using that doorway. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important to the demonstration of, of uh, being the example <laughs> and also uh, guiding others through example and through knowledge and giving other people and other spirits knowledge to set them free to be clearer and to demonstrate through our dollars, the way we spend our dollars is, is what we want to keep alive. And the idea is to put your energy into what really matters and just not necessarily negate because I don't consider myself to be a revolutionary, I'm a very strong evolutionary. And the way I fight society I fight them with love. I embrace them. I don't use negativity. I use only positive thoughts. And what I do is I relanguage my thinking and I realize that every word that I express is a spiritual manifestation in the material world. So I'm very, very accu accurately clear about any word that comes through me. I am manifesting the material world. So I take personal responsibility to be real clear that what it, anything I say has a tremendous impact on others in a positive, loving way. Okay, perfect. So any last words together? I to feel very blessed to be here. I, I feel blessed to be in, in the presence of Dr. Morris and uh, to gain greater clarity and I feel like I have evolved myself in many ways but I feel like I'm going to other levels and I've been doing a lot of inward looking at myself and not not in denial but seeing how I could actually crystallize the creative power within me and how I could move forward and make a greater difference on this planet. So I feel very blessed to be here. Yeah, I, mean, I, I just feel like that I'm doing my mission, that I'm yeah, doing you and then uh, I'm ready to check out. I mean this is a low level of creation and uh, it's tough here for any soul to manifest what he really wants to manifest and enjoy the freedom of that because you're bumping uglies with everybody's state of consciousness. And so you're so far away from the God state in a sense that the fear is high, the lonelinesses are high and all that. And you gotta go through that alone door to get to God. So it's not loneliness, but there's an aloneness about all things because each one of you guys are alone in your world. I don't care if you got a friend, you got a mate, it doesn't matter. Yeah, Only yeah. you walk the walk. Yeah. So it's getting to that you that's so big and so beautiful. Some people refer to it as soul, some pure consciousness. That's what you want. It's beyond the mind and it's who you really are. And that's when your life really begins because you're journeying through all the different heavens and realms, visiting spiritual cities all over the place. You now have a life of joy and energetics instead of this little drama that's being created here on this little rock spinning through space. I think it's about being brave enough to be naked. And wherever I go on the planet, I stand naked because I'm aware of the inner workings of who I am. And I have my self-identity by being an artist and being a creative person that I've spent most of my time inwardly. And as a result, it's very easy for me to be with anybody and everybody is my lover and my friend because I've already done my work within myself that I can surrender and be open and not coming from fear but only coming from love because that's what I feel about myself. So it's very easy, since I've harbored it within myself, it's so easy for me to share it with you. So we dance together. Perfect, thank you very much, thank both you. of you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All you know, your smile needs to be photographed and put on national TV. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing that. You have such an infectious smile. Oh, man. I love you too, Dr. Oh, <laughs> you bring it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.